myself to get some grading done. My semester grades for all my students are due tomorrow and I have two banker's boxes full of assignments that I still need to grade before I can get those final grades in. So I'm watching Property Brothers and procrastinating, but I just figured I would like open the box and start looking at the interactive notebooks that I need to grade. And then I was like, well, I might as well like show you as long as I've got like a hundred of them here, uh, what my kids do for the interactive notebooks. So at the beginning of the school year, I had shared that that was one of my goals for the year was to really get down my procedures for interactive notebooks and you know find some kind of a system to make it easy on me and easy on the kids. I would not say that I've succeeded in that yet, but I'm working on it. This is kind of a thing that I inherited. So for the past, I don't know, 20 years or something, eighth grade US history students at our school have always done interactive notebooks. I don't know exactly how it was done with some of the teachers who have already retired, but they kind of set it up and it's just something that, like you know when you get into eighth grade, that's something that you're going to do. And it is kind of a cool thing. Um, I think that it allows students to kind of go back and revisit content. Um, usually I have interactive notebooks due around the same time as a test, so they're kind of going over that same content and summarizing it and really pulling out the most important information. I don't collect them super often. Um, I collected them three times in a semester, and that's probably what I'll do next year as well. Each page is worth 10 points, and so the interactive notebook grade ends up being worth like 60 points or so. So it's kind of a big thing. If you don't do it, it really hurts students, or if they don't do a good job, it hurts them. I thought I would just show you a couple of them. I'm gonna just show you the back. Ah, names! Ah, names everywhere. Okay, I'm trying not to like show names on these, but just show you what's inside the notebooks. So at the beginning of the year, the kids have to get a certain size notebook. This one I believe is 80 pages, so that they are all the same. Like when I go, to grade them and stack them like they are all in a nice neat stack I don't have like a billion different sizes that I'm like trying to figure out here so I need this to be easy for me too so you need to make sure that they are all exactly the same size and then what I do on the first page is I just give them this table of contents and then they are responsible to write in whatever the page is that we are doing and on this inside flap here I printed out these yeah. Um, these are the directions and so they say things like oh it has to be a single subject 70 page notebook every page must be clearly numbered only use the front of each page no lined paper showing through only one page per entry so if they forget any of those things or if they don't for some reason do something I'm like you had it right here it was right at the very beginning of your notebook you always have that at your fingertips so you can always you know, follow the directions. The first page that I have them do is a why study history page and um, we write this like kind of mini essay at the beginning of the year and it helps them to learn the structure that I want for their essays and then it just kind of gets them thinking about, you know, why history is, is important at all. I um, make them cover all of the lined paper with construction paper or some kind of paper um, but then they can like glue other things on top. They can't use the back of any pages. So this just has to go straight to the next page. I have them do like a little collage about themselves. I have them do a, an interview with somebody in their family that's like over 50 and they have to interview them by a historical event and just kind of see like how history has affected people that they know. This page is where it kind of starts to get into our content. This is um, European settlement in North America and so there were you know a few things that they had to do with that and this is kind of like a a summary of everything we learned about that. This page is about um, triangular trade and they had to write a little summary here and they have to you know make it look good they need to make their maps look good and everything. We did kind of like a DBQ project on who fired the first shot at Lexington and Concord and we did all that in class and then I just had them write their final essay and put that in their interactive notebook. So not every single thing that we do ends up in their interactive notebook, just kind of like the final product of a lot of the things that we study. We studied the Boston Tea Party and um, they had to make like a little comic about it. I like doing these quite a bit. This is an acrostic poem. This one's about the Articles of Confederation. So she has, um, you know, the letters in the word articles and then it has to 
start a sentence about the Articles of Confederation with that letter. So like, any decision made under the Articles required 9 out of 13 congressional votes. Rebellion was caused by the Articles, mostly because they had no strong central government. It really helps kids like summarize and kind of think more critically about, um, you know, facts about a, a certain topic. And we just did the Bill of Rights, and so I had them do um, two amendments per page, and so this girl's got the um, Amendment 1 and Amendment 2. They had to do examples of when you would need to know this amendment, so like Amendment 2, an example of when one should know this amendment is if a police officer finds a gun in your home and tries to arrest you, but you know, you're allowed to own a gun, so um, I, th I thought these were pretty good. All of her pages are numbered, by the way, because I'm only grading the articles poem and the amendments this time. I've already graded everything else and so I want to be able to flip just straight to that page. Um, this is the rest of the amendments. Hers are very cute, you know, they're all color-coded and everything. I like this kind of rainbow page. And then that was the last page that they had to do and when we get back next semester um, we will just start again with a new page. And what I usually have them do is, you know, just like those little tab marker things. It's like a post-it tab that you can buy at the store. They're super cheap. I have a million of them. Um, I just have them put a little tab. I just give it to them um, where the kind of next group of assignments is starting so that they're not flipping through and can't find anything. So this one is prob probably an A. That one looked really good. Um, here's another one. I'll just kind of like flip through and show you how... You know, they can do things a little bit differently. Here's her essay, her um, comics, let's see. The articles poem, some of her amendments. So I'll have to go through and like read all of these, but these look pretty good. And I buy a ton of construction paper at the beginning of the year. I have scissors, glue, um, colored pencils and I just let them use my stuff. We're actually almost out of a lot of it so for the second semester I'm going to offer extra credit if kids will bring in more construction paper and glue and stuff like that and then maybe once a month or so we have a day that's just like interactive notebook day and they have to make sure to bring it because otherwise they have nothing to do. I like put them to work if they forget to bring their interactive notebook, then they're on like cleanup duty. They can't just sit there and do nothing. They've got to do like physical labor for me. Those are kind of kind of stressful and crazy days for me, but it does allow them time to get some of these things done and to use my supplies if they don't have their own. So like this one, I can already see that they didn't um, list all of the assignments that they were supposed to do. So that's going to kind of count against them because I write down their points right here um, as I grade it. So then they can just open to the first page and see what their grade was for like this round of interactive notebook checks. So like this looks really good. She did a good job on her maps. This is her essay. Um, comic strip. Looks like these are the amendments. Ooh, there. <laughs> I'm ruining their books. These are a little bit like flimsy, but mm, I don't know. With the um, construction paper, it helps to make them a little bit more sturdy. Sometimes they get really creative, like this one was the historical interview, and so she asked like the question like, what were you doing? And then you flip it up, I was getting ready for work. This was asking about 9-11, um, where was your neighbor, Irma, on 9-11? So all of her information is very clear, and this is kind of a cool way to do it. So if they ever have um, extra information, they have to create like a fold out thing. They can't go on to the second page. They've got to figure out how to put it all on one page. And then that makes it kind of creative. Here's her articles poem. All the different amendments. I think all of these are girl ones, but there are boys that do a good job too, but this does tend to be something that kind of the girls excel at a little bit more. They just, you know, they found glittery paper, so. <laughs> this is another, um, like, flip-up version of the interview. That one's really cute. Ooh, this has, like, really cool writing at the top for their headings. Um, ooh, I like her poem also. This one's really good. Hmm. Even this one has a few, like, fold-out things here. So they can do them, you know, kind of however they want. There are 
um, certain things they have to have on the page, but it could be really simple. I just tried to grab a few that like I knew would probably be good when I opened them up. Um, a lot of the, the boys just do them a little bit more simply, but you can still get 100% as long as it's complete and neat and you followed all the directions and have all the information. And then by the end of the year, you have this book of just kind of all the important things that we learned in eighth grade, all about the amendments, Articles of Confederation, some stuff on the Revolutionary War. We're going to get into the Civil War um, in the second semester. And it's just kind of a cool thing. And when they go into 11th grade history, you kind of pick up um, like at Reconstruction, kind of where we leave off. And so these can kind of um, just remind students what came before. So I always encourage them to keep the interactive notebooks at least until 11th grade. And then even in 12th grade, you do like government and civics and stuff, and the amendments and things like that are really important to know. I really stress like doing good work, making sure that your work looks nice, it looks presentable, because it does matter sometimes what things look like. If it's a mess, people aren't going to think that you're as responsible. And sometimes when you, you know, you just put a lot of hard work and effort into something, you do a better job and it just comes out looking nice and you're proud of it. There are definitely some boys that are like not seeing the value in this, but I think this is just a good thing. I mean, you know, this is our last year of middle school. This is probably the last time that we can kind of get them to be kind of creative and artsy and work with construction paper, but I like it. I think they end up pretty nice. And just as proof that it's cool to find some of these things later, I was at my um, father-in-law's house for Christmas Eve, and they are keeping our piano right now, my piano, because we can't fit it in our apartment. So um, I was playing some Christmas music, and I opened up the, the bench to look for some Christmas music. And for some reason, this was in there. This was a little project that I did in eighth grade. Um, this is a book report on My Brother Sam is Dead, which I actually had my honor students read this year. And so each page is just like a summary of a chapter. So this is like chapter one, Sam leaves home against father's commands to fight for the rebels. Tim sees father crying about it in the kitchen and is shocked. <laughs> and I had to like draw little pictures. And this is like chapter two. <laughs> He's like, up th this is in the tavern, chapter three pulling a knife on him. I thought this page was like extra funny with the oxen. <laughs> that was just like a, oh, they're going to sell their cattle. <laughs> I don't even remember like all these details in the story, but this was just really cool to find. And I'm like, I might actually um, steal this assignment for next year and have them do a book report, just one page per chapter. Although when I was in eighth grade, I was lucky because I had the same teacher for literature and for history. So we could do like crossover stuff like that. I have both those credentials. I wish I could do that with my students. I would love it and I would have them go through stuff like this. My brother Sam was dead and relate it to history. Wish I could do that. But anyway, that was just kind of like a random video. I, I need to grade these and I just thought I would show you what some of my better students had come up with. Just a side note, it's also going to be like really depressing when you're going through grading some of them because some kids just don't try at all and even though you gave them all the resources and you gave them time, like they just do a terrible job and it's kind of depressing so you like end up really not wanting to grade them. But just focus on the good ones, you know. And they're lost if they don't want to put any work into it, but I really, really try to encourage them to do their very best because it's just a skill you always, always need. So anyway, if you have any other questions about interactive notebooks, you can leave them below. I'm really not an expert on these. Um, there is a girl on YouTube, um, Casey Morris. I think her YouTube name is just Casey Morris Teaching, and she does interactive notebooks kind of in a different way, but I will try and find that video and link it below because I learned quite a bit from her as well. So if you're trying to get these off the ground or maybe just kind of revamp the way that you do interactive notebooks, um, maybe some of my ideas will help or some of her ideas will help. Or if you have great ideas, let me know because I'm still kind of struggling through this. I, I still kind of hate grading them and I <laughs> just like hate the process sometimes, but uh, it'll be worth it. Anyway, enjoy the last little bit of your Christmas break. I am trying to enjoy this even though I'm doing grading. But I can eat pizza at the same time, so yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.